Hey guys, so it's long overdue. I finally, finally upgraded my router and replaced this generic router that BT provide. I've used this for the best part of a year and I guess from a latency performance point of view, it wasn't too bad, but from a software administration point of view, it was quite limiting, it was quite restrictive. There wasn't too many advanced controls. It didn't give me too much control over the bands, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. But from a hardware point of view as well, it wasn't excellent. This has got Wi-Fi 5 AC antennas inside and the range was never good. So the Wi-Fi connection at you know the ground level was okay, but when I went up to the second floor, the ground first second, I tried to switch to this to give me you know a better connection throughout the house because the range on this was terrible. In fact, the range of this is like three times the range of this. Um, it's quite a basic router, Wi-Fi 5 antennas inside. You've got your WAN port for your internet connection, three gigabit ethernet ports, which I assume are shared, and a USB 2.0 port, which can give you access to a printer across your network or extremely slow file transfers. But I have upgraded my router, like I said, and here I've got the Asus RT-AX86U, this gaming-esque dual band router. And the AX here refers to the fact that this is a Wi-Fi 6 router. But I don't just have this router, I also have this router, the Asus XD4, otherwise known as the Zen Wi-Fi AX Mini. And I may add another Asus router to my network as well. And the reason I can do this is because of Asus and their iMesh platform. And that is something that really did appeal to me. What this allows you to do is use any Asus router from the last three to five years, whether it be dual band, tri-band, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6, or the Wi-Fi 6C routers that have been released, you can use any of these and you can use them as a router, but you can, at any point switch any of those routers to become a node, an access point, or you can make them become an extender or a bridge to another network. You can really mix and match and use them however you please. So right now I have this set as my router and this is technically a router with two satellite nodes, but I've got all three of these acting as access points across my house. And in the future, if I want, if I get a more powerful router, then, well, I can set it over there, set it as an access point, an ethernet switch, and somewhere to put some hard drives to share across the network. But that's one of the best things about that. I can mix and match. I can sell some of the older ones later and pick up some of the newer ones, or I can go down the used market route and just pick up old routers to use them as extremely cheap access points. Now, this isn't something new. This is something that's been around a while. Mesh networks are popular, they've been growing over the last few years and they're certainly a buzzword in the networking world. And essentially what they allow you to do is browse the web seamlessly across your house. In a Wi-Fi network, you've got your router and then you've got like say your access point here and you've got your phone, you're using your phone and your tablet, you're walking around your house and when I get closer to this one, it will automatically go to this one. It'll go to the nearest access point to get the fastest connection once you drop to a certain level. But when you've got a router and an extender situation, that's not what happens. I found when this was being used with this extender, I would connect to this one downstairs. And when I came to the top of the house, I was still connected to this router. Likewise, if I connected to this one here, I would go to the bottom of the house and I would still be connected here. Despite the fact that's not really how it should work, they say that it will, you know, it just extends your existing network, but it doesn't really work that way. Now, ASUS aren't the only company that are doing mesh networks. Every major computing company offers it. One of the best ones that I've seen actually comes from TP-Link and their one mesh network. And they're offering one mesh in all of their extenders and access points. And it looks promising, but right now they don't have a lot of support for older devices. This doesn't support one mesh, for example, and it doesn't support older TP-Link uh, TP routers either. But that should hopefully change in the future. But we do see mesh being offered by other companies as well. Now in the home network, the most well-known, I guess, 
as Netgear. Now you'll see mesh networks, like I said, you'll see it offered by like Amazon Aero Pro, Google Nest Wi-Fi, etc. But Netgear's Orbi system has proven to be extremely popular, certainly at the higher end and with business users. But the whole mesh system with you know with Netgear and with other companies is quite disjointed in that if you buy an Orbi Wi-Fi 5 system and you've got your router and you've got two satellites, when you move up to a six Wi-Fi 6 package or Wi-Fi 6C Orbi system, you can't use your older Orbi 5 router and satellites. They won't work with the newer models. There's no backwards compatibility there at all. You have to upgrade to the new package and simply sell your old one. And even within Netgear, Orbi, Orbi's mesh system here doesn't work with Orbi gaming um, routers, for example. Certainly not in a mesh network. You can maybe use them as an access point or something else, but they certainly can't be used like they were intended. And that's where I think ASUS are really, you know, they've really kind of got it sewn down, maybe because they're one of the first companies to do that. But they've built up a situation where you can pick up any ASUS router from the last five years and just make it an access point, make it an extender or a bridge. Now, I would say when it comes to access points, certainly in the business world, most people want plugs, they want small attachments for the ceiling and for the walls. They don't want a full-size router. And I can understand that, which is why I opted for the Wi-Fi EX Mini. I wanted something that was small about the house as well. But there is an appeal to getting the larger routers as well, because you've got an Ethernet switch built in, because you've got USB ports as well. So I can see that, you know, why some people don't go towards ASUS. But another reason that I went for um, ASUS is because of the administration. Now, some, some computing companies have really simplified it, and ASUS have as well, actually. To be fair, they've got a, a mobile app that lets you set things up really quickly. But in the administration panel, you will see many, many different options. I'll explore this in a different video, but you will see many different options as far as configuring you know, advanced settings. And if you're a beginner, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't recommend ASUS routers to you. I probably wouldn't, because if you do start messing around with it, if you do start playing around with it, you could change a setting that completely messes something up. And historically as well, a lot of these routers, you know, the first few versions of them are a little bit buggy. But that kind of appealed to me. I love this kind of hands-on approach with building a mesh network with different routers, but also tinkering different things at the administration area. And one of the coolest things about this is that they also support third-party firmware. So the most popular one is ASUS WRT Merlin. And you can see that my model here, I've highlighted it, my model is supported. These firmware variations tend to be more stable. They don't release them until all the bugs have been tested and they do have additional advanced features that you don't get elsewhere as well. So this is not something I've used yet, but it is something that I'm keen to explore in the future. And it's just another reason that I am attracted to the, the whole iMesh platform, the fact that they're quite supportive of third-party firmware, uh, firmware variations. So I like that appeal of it. Now, I will say though, this was not my first choice. Ubiquity was. I was leaning towards a Dream Machine Pro or one of the upcoming Dream, Dream Machine Pro SEs, which I can't get, I did try to buy. But one of the things that put me off right now, and you know, I might change this in the future if I change my setup, but one of the things that put me off buying right now is that I simply can't buy any Ubiquiti access points that are Wi-Fi 6. They're all out of stock. They're all out of stock. And Ubiquiti tend to be a few, you know, quite a, a few years behind everyone else as far as releasing, you know, uh, products for a certain Wi-Fi standard. They were very late to the Wi-Fi 6 game. I suspect it will be the same for 6C. But I've not been able to buy a Wi-Fi 6 access point. Is you know, it's just not been an option. So yes, Ubiquiti are known for being quite expensive when you think of the whole platform. But cost didn't even become a factor because I couldn't buy any. They were all out of stock on you know popular internet websites um, you know for buying access points but also on the store themselves so if you're looking you know if you're looking at this setup if you're watching this video and you think why didn't you just go ubiquity well yes that is the way that I was going I was going towards Mikrotik because I've got a, a Mikrotik switch but then I was leaning towards TP-Link Omada 
or I was going towards ubiquity and unify. But I kind of pushed myself away from ubiqu ubiquity because of the availability issues that are there right now. Hopefully those will be better in the future. But right now, it's very difficult to pick up the stock, which makes it difficult to build the network that you want to build. But certainly from a cost point of view, from a cost point of view, I've been able to basically get four access points around the house by using this iMesh system. And I am planning on adding different routers in the future. I've got my eyes on a few different ones, like that's the XT8 there. That's a new 6E router. But I've looked at a few different options to expand my network, just kind of, you know, close the gaps a little bit in the house, maybe extend it to the garage a little bit better. And yeah, there's a lot of options for me to do that. So I am going to explore all of this in the future. I'll show you what I'm talking about better because I've got it all set up and I can show you everything. I can show you how these are performing. I can show you the administration area. But for now, I really just wanted to talk about the IMesh platform and just talk about my reasoning for opting for ASUS's router system. You know, I, I'm not really tied to any one brand. I know there's a lot of fanboys in technology or oh, this is better, that's better. I looked at every single router system out there. I looked at every mesh system out there, every access point system out there. And there's pros and cons to each of them as far as configuration, as far as ease of use, as far as cost, as far as availability. But for me right now, at least, ASUS and their iMesh platform is the best option for me. It allows me to mess around with lots of different advanced settings. It allows me to improve my knowledge of home networks and Wi-Fi systems. And it also allows me to kind of mix and match and yeah, just try out lots of different routers. So thanks for watching guys. Please stay tuned for more videos on these routers coming soon. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, especially if you've got an ASUS router already. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. If you've got a, you know, if you've got a TP-Link router, or if you've got an Orbi mesh system, let me know what you're using. And if you have any questions that you want me to answer in a future video, please do let me know and I will do my best to accommodate you. But until then, thanks for watching and take care.